All space science missions increase our understanding of the universe, but some become legendary because of their scientific discoveries and because of the huge challenges they overcome. Ulysses, the joint ESA-NASA probe, is such an adventurer after more than 17 years observing our sun and its environment. The relatively small 370 kilogram spacecraft carrying 10 science instruments was lofted by the shuttle Discovery in October 1990, the first stage of a long journey where no other space probe had ventured and none has gone since. Fifteen months after launch, Ulysses used Jupiter as a springboard to leave the ecliptic plane and to swoop back below the Sun to observe its South Pole in 1994 and then its North Pole a year later. But it was not plane sailing. The spacecraft controllers had to devise imaginative ways to prevent Ulysses from wobbling. One of the booms, unfortunately, was not quite anchored properly at the spacecraft and it was flexing, was moving, and causing the spacecraft to actually wobble about its axis. And if we hadn't been able to deal with that, we would have at some point lost contact with the spacecraft in the worst case, and certainly the science data would have been degraded because the radio signal would have been really very badly hit. The mission was saved, and looping over the sun's poles, Ulysses has steadily been returning information, for instance, on how the sun's magnetic polarity changes. The process by which that took place was something that people thought was very complex, had a lot to do with the dynamo uh, inside the sun and moving sunspots around on the surface. What we found was that, at least seen from Ulysses, the process is very simple. It's like having a bar magnet with a north and south pole that just simply rotates a full 24 hours, if you like, on the clock in 22 years. We know that now that the, the solar wind from the polar regions is fast. It's faster than what we'd seen before in the ecliptic, very often. It travels about 800 kilometers a second, whereas the speed that we normally see in the ecliptic is half that and we found that this is really the, the normal solar wind. It fills much of the heliosphere over much of the solar cycle. Ulysses has also studied the heliosphere in its own surroundings of interstellar space, how its shape changes, expanding and contracting over time. What Ulysses has been able to tell us is how the shape varies in over the full sphere, and it's not a sphere actually, it's compressed towards the nose as we call it, and has actually a tail. It looks much more like our Earth's magnetosphere. Another first has been the unequivocal detection and analysis of interstellar dust particles. However, an attempt to study cosmic rays proved more difficult. By going over the poles of the Sun, we thought perhaps that we would have better access to the cosmic rays, that maybe there was the magnetic fields there would be simpler, uh, would be smoother and act more like a funnel. And so the cosmic rays would flow in over the poles and we'd be able to see the cosmic rays in their original state, if you like. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out to be possible. Again, we learned something about the magnetic field. It's much more turbulent over the poles than we'd previously thought. Ulysses was designed to last five years, but still returning valuable data, the mission was extended four times, allowing the probe to loop around the sun, passing over its poles for a second and third time. But to all good things must come an end. With power from its radioactive isotope generators steadily decreasing, it has become an immense challenge to keep Ulysses warm enough to prevent its hydrazine fuel from freezing. Since 1999, energy-saving measures have been implemented, sharing the power between the science instruments, but the final crunch came early this year. At that point, we got the, the power supply had decayed to the point where we needed to do something quite rigorous and that involved turning off our main transmitter. We, the intention was for a few hours a day, switch it back on when we needed it to transmit data and switch it back off again outside of the communication passes. Unfortunately, we tested it the first time, switched it off, it never came back on. In a few weeks, the space probe will be switched off, 
gracefully bowing out after more than 17 and a half years, left to silently orbit the sun as an artificial comet. Moving moments for Richard Marsden, who has spent 30 years of his life with Ulysses. It's like saying goodbye, obviously, to an old friend. It's, it's sad, but you've had a fantastic adventure together. And it's seen me personally develop from being a young student through to a grandfather and seen many other changes in the way we do business in Europe in space. And so it's, it's really been a companion over those 30 years. And so it's, it's sad to say goodbye, but uh, it served as well and uh, certainly lived up to its mythical uh, namesake's reputation.